One, two, one, two. I go by the name of DJ Wood, and you're now listening to the original Jeek Podcast. Let's go. Ready to make an entrance, so backwards. Cut. Welcome, welcome to That Is Not Now. My name is Ishmael, changing the narrative for men of color and fatherhood, as well as changing the narrative on the things I care about. And this is a special, special, special episode because this is a joint comp- collaboration with my good brother that I've known for over two decades. He is the co 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 founder, co host of one of the dopest podcasts on the planet. Jeek Nation, Mr. Magic, what's going on? Yo, 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 what's good, Ish? As Ish said, uh, my name is Rocky Mr. Magic, or Magic for short. I am one half of the original Jeek podcast by Jeek Nation. We are the best conversation in sports and geek culture. And I'm glad to uh, to do get another collab with you, my brother. Do you smell... La 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 la! What the Jeek Nation is cooking. I can't do the eyebrow. Woo! Like you can't do the eyebrow? <laughs> <laughs> but it's all love. It's all love, man. But what I always do in my podcast, because I'm all about mental health, how's your heart, brother? Oh, man. You know, that's a, that's a, that's a loaded question. Wow. My heart right now is is being carried. The Lord is carrying my heart right now. My beautiful girls are teenagers, the youngest, and these years are trying. I've already gone through one teenage daughter, and that was tough, but three at one shot is, it is a whole nother level. So I am just letting the Lord carry my heart because I am not strong enough to bear it on my own. You know, and just, you know, going through this season, and making sure that I don't feel hopeless or defeated when these times can be tough and trying as these girls go through a very tough you know, season. I can't imagine being a teenager in today's world, let alone being a teenage girl with how these kids, like when we were kids, kids bullied you at school. And then you went home and it was done until the next day. Now with technology, these kids are bullying you online. It is a constant thing. I would not want to be a kid through this current era. We can't even, you know, we, we, we could scrap and like, you no, know, no one would see it. We could settle things that doesn't happen anymore. So being a kid right now, you're scrutinized more than ever. People have access to you more than ever. The social expectations are so different. It is really a, a, it's a whole new world for these kids. So, you know, my my heart is just being carried and just trying to remain hopeful. What about you? you My heart is good, man. I'm blessed. I'm blessed to be with you. I'm just blessed to to have the opportunity to have this platform to, to collaborate with you. The last time we collaborated was what, two, three years ago? Two years ago. Yeah. When we did the with what you call it, Sean Porter and Boyd. Yep, I think that was the last yeah, thing we did. Last, it was that it was or the below last. the surface. They were around the same time. They're around the same time, but it's been a minute, and I'm just blessed that the opportunity to just be with you and just break bread with you and just have a great conversation. And then the other stuff, you know, we I talked to you behind the scenes about it and stuff like that. So yeah, yeah, it's just it's just blessed to be in a position where I can do things that I I like to do. It's passionate. I'm passionate about it. Absolutely. So I'm, 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 I'm blessed, man. Definitely no distractions, like to fall straight, straight ahead onto the, to the things that, you know, I, I always want to do and the things I continue to want to do is just impact the world, man. No doubt. No doubt. And 
And, 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 and I want to congratulate your Michigan Wolverines for winning the national championship. Thank you. Thank you. It's been a long time. I'm a little sad that Harbaugh's leaving, but I, I'm thankful for what he did. A.K.A. the Hamburger Hebbler. A.K.A. <laughs> Danny Davis. <laughs> he does look like the Hamburger Hebbler. He, he, like he looks hamburger. like a Hamburger a little bit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like he stole the trophy and just ran away. Well, I mean, I, you know, <laughs> there's like he's won three straight Big Ten championships. He won the national championship. There is no better. Like if you're going to exit on top, there is no better exit on top. So, like, I can't blame Jim for leaving. The San Diego job, I mean, Herbert's a heck of a quarterback. It's it's Southern California. You know, I mean, it's and he, he played for the Chargers. Like, it, it is, it's really one of those things where I get why he took the job. I just wish he would have stayed. But, you know, I, Michigan's not going anywhere. Whether Sharon Moore becomes the new coach or... You know, there's been rumors that uh, Brian Kelly may be interested in the job. Even, bef- even before we won, there was rumors that Kelly might be interested in it if Harbaugh went back to the NFL because there was talk about that win or lose if Harbaugh would go back to the NFL. So Michigan's not going anywhere. And then I'm just hoping my Detroit Lions win this NFC championship game and make their first Super Bowl. What are your thoughts of them being now the Americans team? That's I mean, about. they're America's they're team. The they're Amer- they're jumping on the bad wagon for this, you know, for this playoff run, and it's a great story. I mean, America America loves a great story. America loves a good underdog story. You know, it's been since 1991 since we've been in the NFC Championship game, and this is a very dangerous team. So, if San Fran plays poorly like they did against Green Bay, we have a shot of going in there and winning the game. And we've looked better each week, so I'm I'm very I'm confident that uh, Coach Campbell will have the team prepared that will go in there and really have a legit shot at winning this game and making our first ever Super Bowl. And I'm a strong believer that NFL is rigged, but that's my my belief that they want to see the Lions in a in a Chief Super Bowl, a rematch week one. Ah. Uh, Maybe I I don't know I think I don't know that that's 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 tough I would like I mean I would rather the Lions play the Chiefs than the than the Ravens because I think the Ravens overall are a better team and they and they took it to us last time we played but I mean I'm just saying the X factor is what's the what's the chick's name what's her name the the singer that's Dayton Dayton Kelsey oh Taylor Swift. There you go. That's the X factor. Well, so people are saying what they really want is an Eminem versus Taylor <laughs> Swift battle, which, yeah, I, I can do without either one of those. But <laughs> you know, it is what it is. Because the NFL is a business. At the end of the day, bro, it's like hey, they it, want new. They want new fans. Well, yeah, I mean, and and they're and they. They push for the casual. They don't push for the real sports fan. They want more casual eyeballs. And even though we purists don't want it to be, the NFL, the NBA, the NHL, Major League Baseball, they are what our primary topic tonight is. They are sports entertainment. Yes. You know, it, the NBA is an entertainment industry company. The NFL is an entertainment company. So... You know, I don't know how how strict to script they are, if there's a little ad-libbing here and there. I didn't see anything to me that said, you know, script. I mean, I've seen some stuff. We've both seen some stuff that said, okay, that's rigged. But this year, these playoffs seem pretty kosher so far. And I don't say that because my lines are winning. I say that because they seem they seem pretty kosher. Yeah, let's see what happens. You know, we'll, we'll wait until... Who makes it to the Super Bowl? And then we'll have that conversation after. <laughs> but transitioning into, like you said, sports entertainment, I think one of the biggest news of 2024 is that the death of cable. But this has been going on for almost 10 years now. One of the staples of shows on cable is WWE Raw. 
been on USA for 30 years. Now in 2025, it's going to transition to Netflix on a big deal of $5 billion, which is a game, I want to say a game changer, but more likely, again, going back to the death of cable because Raw was that staple for cable tel- television. Now that's going to be gone. Now it's going to force people who don't have Netflix, if they want to watch Raw, to subscribe to Netflix. So, like, learning some more of that information, what do you think about this in in real time? So my, my thoughts are, well, this is really a big blow to NBC Universal, which is what, you know, who owns US, the USA Network. Raw has been on USA, not continually, but except for the, the short time where... Raw was on TNN slash Spike TV. Raw had been on USA essentially almost from from the very first Raw. It's been a USA staple for the majority of Raw's existence. And I believe that, and this will definitely be the first time in its 30-year history that Raw has not aired new episodes on a linear television network. So... This is this is massive. the The money portion you mentioned five billion. That is the commitment made by Netflix, and that's going to pick out pretty, pretty much five hundred million per year, which is essentially double the current U.S. the current NBC Universal deal. That is, and then that's just an astronomical jump in doubling the the value for just for just raw. This is going to force a lot of hands, like you said. And a lot of these hands are going to be forced to decide to, to keep Netflix because with other things that Netflix would have, like, you know, Orange is the New Black, you know, when a new season would drop of that or Stranger Things, you know, or any other popular Netflix original, you know, people would sign up for a free trial and then they would go to watch that. And then after that, they would then drop, you know, they would drop off. Um, you can't do that now because, as we both know, it's 52 weeks of Raw. There is no off season. There is no, you know, there is no pause. You are, it's 52 weeks of television, and it's it's live television. So that is really going to be an interesting shift to the Netflix model because we traditionally don't have anything like that some streaming platforms like hulu for example has been had live sports on for for a couple years and max started implementing live sports but netflix has kind of been lagged in that part of the game but this is a game this is a big shift this is a big game changer come 2025 where the biggest wrestling company in the world, the most profitable wrestling company in the world, who allegedly may have signed a, you know, the biggest Japanese star in the world. Mm -hmm. 2025, that's going to be the exclusive home for their flagship show. You know, that is, ah, I mean, it's tough to even know how to react to. And then as what, you know, when we talked about preparing for this, even though Raw has been the flagship show and is always and will always be treated as a flagship show, the biggest show, the better show of late, has been SmackDown. And the rights to that, who knows what the asking price would be for the rights to SmackDown or where SmackDown could be. SmackDown could end up on Max. It could end up on Paramount. It could end up with Disney. You know, Disney slash Hulu. I mean, there's a lot of options and linear cable for it to keep it would really have to make just an insane type of deal. Like we thought the Fox deal for SmackDown was big, but to keep SmackDown off of something else, ah, that could take a really insane offering. Like I can't just to put it in, in, in terms 
SmackDown was SmackDown is going to supposed to transition this year in October from Fox to USA under a five year one point four billion dollar deal. So that's five years one point four billion. Raw's twenty twenty five deal is ten years five billion. And that's Fox had been great. Fox had reportedly been paying about two hundred and five million a year for the rights to SmackDown. So if SmackDown continues to be the better show, the higher drawing show, the asking price for it could it could double again or even more. And it, it's crazy that you bring that up because you know you know I'm, I'm about bringing receipts. Back in 2019, Nick Khan said WWE the Peacock deal is now undervalued, and this was in 2019. And under Peacock, you know, they have the premium live events. Right. And the Peacock deal ends in 2026. Correct. And so could there be a possibility we could see premium live events on Netflix? That that's a that's a potential. I think the premium live events they may yeah, that that's a good question because you know what do what do they do with the network in that library? Does the library go to a different home? If I'm if I'm TKO, because we can't, you know, since now they're WWE now has a boss, if I'm TKO, I would want to simplify things as much as I can for my fans because God forbid a wrestling a, a WWE fan has to go to Netflix for Raw. Let's just say, for discussion's sake, Max for SmackDown, and then the let's say the library stays on Peacock for whatever deal. Now to get access to what you used to have in one place, now you've got to have three subscriptions to three places. And then you're likely going to have people who are going to, you know, say, well, I prefer SmackDown over Raw, so I'm only going to have this or and this, or maybe I don't watch the library enough, so I'm not going to pay for that anymore. And maybe I only pay for these two, or I'm only going to pay for one. So TKO's really got to figure out how conducive they're going to make accessing WWE content to the consumer because if it gets too convoluted and it gets too spread out, that's going to be tough. One thing that cable did do is essentially make it simple because even though the shows are on different nights and different channels, you, when you pay for your cable package, you're paying for one item that gives you access to both things. Obviously, with streaming, that's not the case unless everything is under one umbrella. So that that would be... That would be my concern for, for TKO as far as what how they're going to make that decision. And also, if Netflix would try to bid for SmackDown, would they, you know, would they be willing to pay, you know, whatever the potential massive asking price for SmackDown would be? Would they be expecting some type of discount because they were already paying for Raw? Like, it's, it's a really interesting situation. Yeah, it is, and it then also is is that it's a ten year deal, but within the five years, if it doesn't work out, Netflix can just walk away. Netflix can opt out after five, and they can also extend for another ten. Yeah, that's their option. But also, you have to also consider, even though because TKO owns WWE, and WWE and the UFC, you also have to consider that portion of it and what that could do to potential deals with TKO that that really could be a factor to whatever negotiations could happen in the future because if they're going to do premium live events on a streaming channel then the you know UFC on ESPN may no longer be a thing and it may become UFC on Netflix or UFC on Max which to me would make more sense speaking of Max so I, 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 I've had this thought for a while, and okay. 
I know it's not going to happen because I know because Vince is Vince. And unless someone really at TKO really sees value in it, I don't see it happening. But the wrestling fan in me would do it. Max or HBO has always been known for being more raw, you know, more vulgar, more nudity, more sex, you know, just just being a, a rougher product overall. Being, you know, especially for when we were younger, you know, when TV, you know, TV, FCC, and such rules were restricted, you couldn't say a lot of things on television. Now with streaming services, you get away with more stuff, but some of them still have, you know, rules as far as, you know, what they're what they allow on the content. HBO pretty much has no rules. I mean, anyone who's watched Game of Thrones knows there's there's like no rules on, on right. HBO. So. My thought, what it has been for a few years, is that Vince should, and TKO now could, bring back the ECW brand and have it be an exclusive show on Max where they could actually be extreme like ECW was in the 90s. Part of that's probably just nostalgia talking in my head, but... You you know, a big thing that problem with ECW reboot under the WWE banner was the fact that it was on sci-fi and you couldn't do what ECW did on network television. Well, if network television is only a problem because you can do anything under the sun on HBO, to me, you still have an, you still have an audience that would like that. They don't want to watch CCW or combat zone or, you know, these other known indie, you know, extreme brands, they would prefer it to be a better, higher production that WWE does. I think it would be a cool thing. I think it would be worth it. And it just, it would give you a, a place to, to sign those guys who want to do that style. Someone, especially big names like Mox, like if they had something like that, Moxley probably wouldn't have gone to AEW. He probably would have stayed and and headlined a ECW brand of right. WWE because he, you know, one of the reasons why he left is he wanted he wanted to bleed. He wanted to do stuff that they didn't want to do and he, they weren't doing anymore. And we see in AEW, he's done a lot of bleeding. And yeah, a lot. Yeah, he's done a lot yeah, of bleeding. Every, every match he bleeds. Mox likes to bleed. So to me, there are fans who want that, and it's not a small amount. It's it's you know it's not millions and millions, but it's a substantial audience that wants to see that. And if you have it, and you have a place where it can be, why not? And that's just you know you've got guys that you can sign that you don't have to worry about them working with your other guys. They're going to work that show. They're not going to work Raw. They're not going to work SmackDown. They're going to work whatever EC, you know, name you want to give the ECW show. And that's that. They don't have to have any crossover. They can just be a separate show. And if you have guys on your other rosters that want to go to you know, the extreme version, cool. That's their path. If they want to switch out, then they switch out. They don't do that. But like, it to me doesn't make sense to not provide an option to a substantial part of the audience that would like to see the blood and the craziness and the jumping off of, you know, you know, balconies and whatever else these guys want to do to their bodies, you know? Right. right. No, but the one thing too, again, it's that sports entertainment thing. And what, what I think they want to just stay away from is they want to kind of get that, Disney image of wrestling because again it's sports entertainment. They want to make it, you know, child like like child friendly. You know they they they're done with the Raw is War era. They're done with that. Well, the, the attitude. They mean the attitude era. Yeah, attitude, they're done with that. That's 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 a distant memory. That's never coming back. No, no, and, I, and, I, and I'm not. I don't. I'm not asking for it to come back in that aspect. I mean, I guess kind of mean that was, you know, ECW's heyday was during the Attitude Era. So I guess in a way I'm saying that. But what I'm saying is the Max would be a place where you can have that and you don't have to worry about people being upset that it's on network television. 
you know if you're going there and you're pressing play, you know what you're in for. You know that you're going to see mature themes. You're going to hear a lot of cussing. You're going to see, you know, you're going to hear all the, you know, all you may hear and see things that are that are offensive. And if you have a problem with that, don't turn it on. And they don't seem like, and all the ECW stuff is on Peacock right now. And no one's like, you know, making a fuss about it. So I think if you're going to make a new show, I think Max would be a great place to put an ECW. Even if you don't use the ECW name, right. if, you, if you just put an extreme, you know, or underground, you know, type of show that's, you know, that's grimier, grittier, you know, got more of the blood, got more of the, you know, these guys that want to bleed, let them bleed. You know, if it, to me, I don't see why Vince wouldn't do it because he's all about draw me money. So if he draws him money, who, exactly. who cares? But, but that's the one thing too. It's like at the end of the day is what Emmanuel wants. <laughs> Cause he's the, he's the dude. He's the, he's the top. He's the top. Right. Dude. And that's why I think a TKO could potentially do it because I mean, let's, let's, let's not act like the UFC is, is modern gladiator. That, that's about blood. That's about Bones being broken, you know, arms being snapped. So I think if, if someone pitched it enough to Manuel and he could see that there is value there, you know, I think it's a prime opportunity. If you've, even if I'm Vince and I say now no one's going to blame me if I bring it back because TKO is ultimately responsible. And now maybe Vince himself, you know, not that he would because anything that brings anything to a name that he didn't create he doesn't want to push but an extreme wrestling show i think would be a great idea i think there's a i think because of the production value that the the wwe has or just which is just there's no one no one produces television the way they do for wrestling like their production value is is so far and above everyone else's it's not even funny but when which i'm gonna call it when what you call Peter Dunn left, you can you <clears> see <throat> the change. You see a lot of change. Oh, you want Ke- when Kevin Dunn left? Kevin Dunn, yeah, that's what I mean. I call him yeah, Peter. You Dunn. Call him Peter, yeah, you call him Yeah, you were thinking about Peter Gunn. So. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's different, but you know, I mean, it's really not. I mean, it's really it hasn't changed that much, to, to, in my personal opinion. Like, I see a couple differences with Kevin Dunn gone, but I don't think it. Is that significant of a change? I really don't. And then the production level is still, it's still fantastic. The angles they get, you know, the dedication to wrestling, the WWE style, you know, focus on that hard camera. And honestly, though, my thing is if they, and if they wanted to do something different to even test the waters, a hardcore show would be the best way to do that. You test different ways of shooting wrestling with that show. And you don't have to do that with NXT because NXT has grown as a product itself where it's, it's more viable. Let your hardcore show be where you take the risks because you know, they're going to not your primary streamer for it. They know that they're going to get something raw, something gritty, something that's going to be a different product than what they see on raw or SmackDown or NXT. You know, I think that would be, a good place to take those risks, to take those chances while these guys are jumping off stuff and taking chances, you know? Right. But I think where they're leading to is they have that Walmart mentality where this deal with Netflix is going to be the, the beginning of like one shop area buying where I can see everything WWE is going to be on Netflix. I can see that happening. Like all, because the one thing about WWE is that they have a monopoly on the history of wrestling. Right. I mean, they own the AWA tapes, they own the WCW tapes, the ECW tapes, and a bunch of other older, other promotions. They have that for. I, it, I would agree with you if Vince was still a private company. But TKO, who knows what they'll do? That's true. Because the one thing that's crazy, too, is that, you know, The Rock is a part of the board of director. And yes. the agreement is that he has the rights to The Rock name. 
Correct. Which Vince would never, never, a million years, ever, never give that up. Give that up. Never. And this is, and that kind of, kind of, like you were alluded to, is that this is a different WWE yes. than Vince McMahon. WWE. This is a different business now, and how they do, and how TKO is going to do. TKO knows the value in the Rock's name, and they also understand if they piss the Rock off, that is not good for business. So give the man what he wants, you know. Now. Matt and Jeff Hardy can't come and demand, you know, um, Team Extreme or something like that. Like, they're not letting that go. They don't have that type of pull. But, you know, an Undertaker, a, you know, a, a massive name, They if they wanted to pull that, they'd probably get that because it's a different, it's a different business. And you're talking about a a, a publicly traded company that, operates like a traditional com- company and even though WDB was publicly traded for a while Vince did not run it that way he still ran it like it was a privately owned company and the board really couldn't do anything because he had so much of the voting power you know it didn't they could say whatever they wanted it didn't matter because Vince was Vince was king Vince is not king we have so many different avenues that TKO can go with with things especially because when it comes to it, it's all about drawing money to the fight, whether it's UFC or whether it's WWE. So there's going to be, I, I foresee a lot of cross promotion between okay. UFC and WWE. I see that TKO passing a lot of guys who can't hack it anymore in the UFC to try to draw money in WWE. I'm kind of surprised McGregor hasn't gone that path yet. You know, talkers like him, I'm surprised Covington isn't at the performance, you know, Kobe Covington isn't at the performance center being, you know, being a racist heel. You know, some of these guys, I mean, Covington, he's a, I mean, I can't stand the guy, but he's a good fighter. He's, he's lost a, a couple, talker. he's a good talker, but he's lost a couple steps and he can't hang at the top of the division anymore. And if he wants to keep making money and big money and be a big name, he's not going to be able to do it in the UFC. And I don't think... Bellator is not that they're doing poorly, but I don't think he jumped to Bellator would be the money he's looking for or the level of fame he's looking to maintain going to WWE potentially could be, you know, that's a a lateral move for guys like that. And if you, and if you can be in the UFC and keep your, keep your good looks, you know, keep your face intact, you know, you can go there in WWE and, and potentially make some money Every, you know, you're as a competitor, you automatically have a legit background. People are going, you're going to be more believable. Even though Rousey was not the greatest, in my opinion, obviously her background's legit. There's no, there was no doubt. I just think she wasn't booked well and, you know, character wise wasn't, you know, great. But obviously the, you know, the Ken Shamrock one was a good run. The Dan Severn run could have been better, but was a decent run. And everybody knew the legitimacy behind Dan Severn behind Ken Shamrock, even Tank Abbott and WCW, legitimacy behind those guys. So, and even, even the, you know, the other stars we, you know, in, in wrestling, the Nick Nemeth as a wrestling star, Bobby Lash as a wrestling star, Brock as a wrestling star, uh, you know, turned UFC. And obviously Kurt Angle, the greatest, you know, athlete turned pro wrestler in that, you know, grappling sense, you know, or, or martial art to, to wrestling sense. The legitimacy is there. You continue to add legitimacy in those athletes. You know that just that's just to me that's just more dollars, and those are names you don't have to build. You don't have to build those names. Those names are already established. You can teach them how to work in the ring, and then you plug and play them. You know, I, I just I think there's just so much potential for TKO to just do so much more than what Vince would have or could have done when he was at the reins. I can see that happening down the road, but I think right now it's just that just trying to solidify those deals. They got raw on Netflix. Now it's SmackDown. Right. Smack, that's the, that's, that's SmackDown the is next. Big one right there. That's the big elephant in the room is where is SmackDown going to go? But the problem is 
is can Netflix commit to that type of money? Like you, you said everything under one umbrella. I don't know if Netflix could, I think the only, honestly, I don't think Netflix could even generate that money to commit to that. The only company I think that would have the money to buy and encapsulate everybody is Disney. And I don't think that they want that product. There had been talk about Disney buying WWE before, but I really don't think they want that product. Granted, WWE at Disney World would be a really cool thing, and there could be so much potential for you know a, a part of the theme park that is wrestling dedicated, you know, right. a, a wrestling resort where your room is you know rock themed or Austin themed or you know you know whoever whatever stars like right. there is so much potential there if you know, what Disney could do if they bought it. And I think they're the only ones with the juice that could buy the rights for Raw and SmackDown. Because I don't think Netflix can come up with another, you know, let's say even $7 billion or seven and a half to to encapsulate SmackDown and Raw. That's a lot of money. No, it, it, it is. But what I worry with Disney is that they're losing money, too. Like, you see what they're, with ESPN, with the cutbacks on ESPN, and you see, like, the, the the uncertainty with Marvel and stuff like that. So Disney right now is kind of like on that, uh, let's, 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 let's see what we're doing with the money and things like that. So Disney is not like a, a slam dunk either. Well, see, the, Disney's, uh, Disney's, I, Disney's not losing money. Disney's losing profits. Mm-hmm. They're not losing money because they're rearranging things because their projected profits aren't what they projected. The MC, and, and obviously part of that's because the MCU has not had the focus that the first three phases had. Right. So a lot of the shows and movies and stuff are not, are not coming to the same result. And then there obviously there's the, you know, the unrelated to the actual art. And then there's the people who are, you know, bashing them because, you know, you know, female led shows and, you know, all the, all the political social BS that are keeping people away from consuming some MCU stuff. And the ESPN thing, ESPN is a part is, is a staple of cable television, like we mentioned earlier, and that is fading. They have to retool. How even there, um, that happens? At, even there, my bad. Even their their streaming service, like when they jumped off, wasn't doing well from day one. Oh no! I mean, they 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 definitely fumbled how they launched Disney Plus, but Disney Plus has recovered pretty well. I was talking about the ESPN, and you know, oh okay, they try to bundle everything. Well, I, I have to me, I have the bundle, and the bundle okay. to me is worth it, like because it gives me ESPN Plus. It gives me Hulu and it gives me Disney 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 Plus, so I, I I like the bundle. I my problem with the the bundle or the ESPN portion of the bundle is that I don't get enough that I care about because of the TV deals. So I I don't get enough NBA basketball that I want to see. I I get a lot of I get I get a lot of sports, but a lot of it you know there's no NFL on it. There's very little NBA. And, you know, there's college basketball. The college basketball season is good for. And college football season is actually not even really good for because the Big Ten Network, it's actually only like SEC stuff because the SEC deals with ESPN. Big Ten Network is separate. You know, the Pac-12 is not even going to be a thing anymore, and that, that network failed. So, like, honestly, the you know, the Big Ten Network is the only thing that really matters. And... Notre Dame is still independent. So outside the SEC, you really can't watch much football on ESPN. So like Disney has to decide how they're going to retool how they do sports as well as how they retool how they're going to do with ABC because how we consume that is, is changing drastically. But they still, but, but they're the only ones with the money. I shouldn't say that. I'm, I'm going to change. They're the one of two with the money. The other one with the money, who I think could be, a sleeping giant in this, and I think they're biding their Amazon? time, huh? You talking about Amazon? No, You're talking about Amazon? not talking about Amazon because Amazon. Actually, okay, Amazon has the money. I don't think Amazon is, in my opinion, Amazon doesn't seem to be as dedicated to 
the television and film portion as some other companies are. I think the sleeping giant that could be a contender, at least for WWE content or wrestling content, as far as a encapsulating home, because Amazon technically they do have the money too. So I don't consider them to be a potential player. I think the only player that has had rumors around it that could be a, a spot is Disney. The one I think that could be a, a, a dark horse is Apple. Okay. Apple could be a dark horse landing spot. They have the juice to afford everything. And their television and film department and the money they're making from that is growing. You know, that latest Leo movie, um, Blood on the Diamond or something like that. That has done extremely well. You know, you know the ending of Ted Lasso brought in huge numbers. For all mankind is bringing has brought in big numbers. The 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 Godzilla show I forget the name of it something with an M. That uh, minus one. No, that's the movie. But they have a Godzilla show that's that's doing really good numbers. Don't they have? Don't they have? They play mo- a lot of the Yankee games on Apple TV. I think they do. I'm not sure how that how that ties in to be perfectly honest, but yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure on that. I can't comment on that. No, I think they do. They do play Apple TV. They have Yankee games on it. A lot of the Yankee games and that's live TV. That's live games. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so I'm, I'm, I'm not sure on the, on the sports side for, for Apple TV, but like they are surprising. I didn't foresee two years ago the, the leap that they've made with, their original films, their original, their original shows and how good a lot of them are and the eyeballs that they're getting and the money they're making off of that. So they could potentially be a place where all that WWE content could land or, or some of it. Amazon, yeah, they've got the money, but they just, to me, don't seem all that committed to providing the best experience for people like they have a home run here and there invincible for example a home run here you know there's a lot of hope for the fallout show that they're doing wrinkle in time but handmaid no yeah yeah handmaid's tale was that amazon i think it was i know man in the high castle was so like they've had a couple ones here and there but I just don't see them as a player for, for wrestling. I think the real player outside of Netflix and Max will potentially be, you know, Disney getting in and Apple as a potential dark horse because they always, they, cause they always buy their time and, and pull the trigger when you least expected it. Right. Right. And I, and that could possibly happen. I think that might happen. But also, what I also when I when I think about the, the the Netflix deal is that there's a potential that they might look into other things because I think one of the bigger things that people are not talking about is the World Cup. I, mm. I know there's an exclusive with ESPN now, but I don't know when their deal ends. But I think FIFA, the World Cup is a, a, a big thing right there, too. No, that is. If Netflix, if Netflix get the World Cup, now they're reaching a global audience, even though they already have a global audience. But I would say that's the most watched. I mean, that's the, that's the most watched ev- multi-day event in the world. Like, the Super Bowl is the most watched single game. But as right. far as, like, tournament, you know, yeah, the World Cup is that, that's it. So, I mean, so obviously that's Disney money there. Disney has to make a, you know, a, a decision. Like I said, they've got to re- decide how they're going to retool how they do sports. If, to me, if they start offering more within E, even if they raise the price, like I think right now the price is like, I think it's still thirteen ninety nine for the bundle. Right. If they raise the price to, let's say, 20 a month, but anything that's broadcast on ESPN essentially, that you I get access to, that's worth it to me. Right. You know, that means if I can go on the Disney Plus app and I can see all the Disney stuff, all the Hulu stuff, 
and and the in ESPN uh, sports section where I can do the World Cup or, or or whatever event you know events they have. To me, that's to me that's worth it. College, whatever whatever they have, to me that makes it worth it. Some things, yes, they don't have, but then they can start contending for more. They can start contending because, I mean, we're we're near the end of January. March Madness is right around a corner. How long will CBS be able to hold on to those rights? There you go. You know, how long will you know other sports that have big bigger events? How long will the Kentucky Derby be where it is? How long will how long will, how long will NBC be able, Universal be able to hold on to the Olympics? There you go. You know, so depending upon you know that could be potentially we could potentially watch Netflix go to Netflix for the Olympics or go to Max for the Olympics. I don't. I, I think you know. I think Disney, however, they, however they handle the next year or two with how they do sports and whatever deals they can strike and how committed they are to continuing to produce linear television compared to linear, not quite linear television, but putting that stuff and pushing it onto the streaming platforms. That's going to really decide how they're going to proceed moving forward with, are they going to be able to be contenders in that space? Because even if they don't contend for, WWE, someone's going to have, you know, someone's going to have to deal with bidding for AEW. I don't think AEW is going anywhere. You know, Tony Khan, his money aren't going anywhere. And, you know, but they're not going to get the same money as WWE. No, but here's, but the thing is, if, you know, if you want to invest in wrestling and you don't want to invest that much money in wrestling and you want to take a, you know, you want to take a, because here's the thing, like, Tony Khan's got a lot of money, and he's doing a pretty good job with the TNT and TBS deals on producing good-looking television. But Tony Khan doesn't have Disney money, and he doesn't have Disney production. So if Disney bought or you know had a deal with them, that could increase the production value, that could increase the eyeballs that are already Disney Plus slash Hulu subscribers that but could potentially now watch, especially if you have people who don't want to pay Netflix to watch wrestling. So if as, for example, let's say I'm not as big of a wrestling fan as I am as a, as, but just hypothetically as, as, as a family, especially if, as a, if you're a family man, if you're paying Disney, the Disney bundle, you're getting Disney stuff that your kids can watch. You've got ESPN stuff for sports stuff. And you've got Hulu where, you know, that has, you know, television for teens and, you know, that, you know, women and all, it has all types of stuff on Hulu. If you have a wrestling product there, financially, it makes more sense to pay Disney, get some wrestling there instead of paying Disney and Netflix just for Raw. You know, because sometimes, you know, people, you know, there was a whole, you know, 10 years ago, the whole talk was about cutting the cord from cable. Now people are talking about slimming down like rocket money. Every ad they put out is about reducing your subscriptions. So if you're trying to save money by reducing subscriptions, Disney plus with AEW is a much more economical choice than paying for Netflix. If primarily what you have it for is wrestling. Because if you're, if you're a family of four with kids you're going to get so much more value out of that Disney bundle than that's the same price or cheaper than what you're paying for Netflix. Right. So, I mean, and that could make AEW a better product, a, and a larger, you know, a bigger contender. They're not obviously competing on the same level as WWE. And I don't think they ever will, to be perfectly honest, but mm. It could definitely make them bigger, give them more eyeballs, and make them much more of a factor if someone like, you know, a Disney, an Apple, or even an Amazon would bid or contend for that business because those TNT and TBS deals with the phasing out of linear television aren't going to last too much longer. No, no. And that's the one thing, too, is that Tony Khan is going to have to you know, get the ball rolling on something because like we started earlier that, you know, 
you know, the death of cable is is here. It's been going on for almost ten years. So he's gonna have to figure something out because yeah, it's it's, it's not looking good. It's not looking good. He's and he's gonna need, and he's gonna need to strike soon, because you don't want to wait to see what WWE does, because then you're left with whatever their their scraps are, for lack of a better term. You want to present your product and say, okay, we average. I don't even know what the numbers are, but let's say let's say Collision averages eight hundred thousand a night, you yeah. know, and let's say that uh, what's the other show? Collision Randy. and Rampage, Rampage, yeah. Let's say Rampage averages six hundred thousand. So you say, look, you know, we've got we've got one point four million viewers of wrestling each week, guaranteed. Those are eyeballs that we can bring to your streaming platform, and then of course, you know, that that gives you they can leverage that to negotiate. Now, obviously, they'll be like, well, some of those people are already watching us, and you know, they go back and forth, but. That's 1.4 million eyeballs. They can say, we're bringing that to your platform, guaranteed. You know, 52 weeks of programming, twice a week, those people are going to be on your programming. And if they're watching, obviously, automatic suggestions, roll into the next thing. They're probably going to stay on there. View whatever ads you have on your you know, on, on your streaming, depending upon what service they have, and go from there. If I'm Tony Khan, I start trying to make that deal now because you don't you don't want to wait till smackdown is somewhere and has a home you don't want to wait till nxt has a home again because they could end up on three different places you want to find a big a good place to go and get in now and establish yourself even if you have to do it a little early before your even if you have to amend your deal with tnt a bit to allow for the streaming side you want to get in you want to get in now you want to establish your spot in that streaming side. And the last place you want to end up is having to fall to like NBC Universal and having to go on Peacock because now you're just going to look like, you know, a copycat of Vince. You all you went where they left. Like that's the last (laughs) thing you want is to go where Vince left. So you want to get in, you want to get in now, you want to get in with a Disney, you want to get in with an Apple and Amazon, anybody but NBC essentially is what you want to get in with and and establish and, and go from there. Or you might see him on Tubi. <laughs> right, because you don't want to end up on Tubi. You don't want to end up on Tubi. And, I mean, yeah, then that Tubi's a whole other ballgame. But you don't you don't want to end up on Tubi. Yeah. You know, Tubi's generating a ton of money. You don't want to end up there. No, you don't. That's where a lot of black content is going. It's Tubi. Yes. But we, that, that's, that's, another that's a whole, that's a whole, <laughs> did you see what Roland Martin said about Tubi? I did. I yeah, did. that's a whole other conversation. That's another subject. But in your um, in your crystal ball, twenty twenty six is when Peacock and the deal with Peacock ends. Mm-hmm. Do you see WrestleMania on Netflix? That that depend that that depends upon where that depends upon where SmackDown ends up. If SmackDown is on Netflix, then yes. If SmackDown is somewhere else, then it's going to be on wherever the eyeballs are are going primarily. Or it could end up becoming going back to a paper pay per view situation. I don't think it will. I don't think that's what they want to do because now they've got a new generation of fans that are accustomed to these premium live events, even though my mind was still pay-per-views, but these premium live events, especially because, you know, they're happening, premium live events are happening different days. They're not on Sunday nights all the time like they were when we were growing up. You know, there's the Saturday ones and then they're doing the, and during the week ones where, you know, like the Saudi dates and stuff. So I, I think that whoever has whoever's bringing in the biggest dollars and the biggest eyeballs is where WrestleMania ends up. There's a high potential right now because Netflix got their foot in the door first that they could end up with it. But wherever we see SmackDown fall, you know, that's the, the bigger one of those two would probably be where it's at, but guarantee it'll be on Netflix. If they have both shows, I can't see going anywhere else. And that would where be you, and that would be big. That would be huge. Where do you see SmackDown going? 
I think if TKO separates it, I think uh, it's tough because of all the consolidating and, 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 you know, with Discovery buying HBO essentially, I mean, it could end up on Max. They seem to really be pushing for this live sports thing. I that that's tough because I just don't think Netflix can can throw out another five seven billion dollars to add SmackDown to that lineup. I just especially in the next you know I forget when the the SmackDown deal ends relatively soon. Yeah, yeah so the yeah so yeah, October. Yeah. October is when it goes to USA, and then I think around the same time as Peacock, Peacock deal ends, close to that, close to that timeline. I'm trying to think, I don't know, I don't know when the date. I don't, I don't know what, I don't know what when the deal moving SmackDown to Universal ends, but if there is not an extensive time frame on that. Let's see if Google let's see till end twenty twenty six, March of twenty twenty six. Okay. So they've got two years essentially to figure it out. So Netflix pretty much has will have two years to figure out if they can if they can bid and they're making enough, if it was worth it for them to bid for SmackDown. And if SmackDown is still the show with the most eyeballs and making the most money for WWE, the asking price in two years would probably be closer to $10 billion. And with already the commitment to pay five, you'll be two years into paying, you know, you'll be, you've paid a billion dollars to them for, you know, two years in. That's yeah. That's <laughs> that's a lot of money to commit, um, you know, to to it. But two years in, you'll you'll have a good idea as far as you know if it's going to be worth it to to take to roll those dice, and if you can make it work, you know that you know that makes sense. Like I, you know, it, it also depends on how immersive we you get. Like you know, for example, some people may not realize, but you know, you can get mobile games through Netflix. Like I have Grand Theft Auto San Andreas. I downloaded it on my phone just to see what the experience is like now that I have access to that mobile game because of my Netflix subscription. So, you know, now, you know, game, mobile games are a part of the Netflix subscription. If things get more immersive with WWE, let's say, uh, you know, in Netflix. So let's say I'm watching WWE on my phone. And, you know, I'm watching a match and there's an interactive pop-up to buy, you know, a Kevin Owens shirt. If I can, you know, one or, or if I could one tap or, or overlay, you know, Apple Pay, buy that shirt and still, you know, and where maybe, you know, it shifts the, the action to half the screen and I make my transaction and I'm still watching you know, if it gets, you know, to an immersive point where you can make, you know, you can transaction, you know, and, and while you're watching the events on Netflix, you've got, you know, that's that you've got something there. You've got a whole different type of experience that would be very lucrative for, for both sides. So it really depends upon, you know, how deep. Netflix can dig themselves into being a, an invaluable part of WWE. You know, can they take that gaming portion, you know, into not maybe just into mobile, but can they work it where if you're a Netflix subscriber, you get access to WWE 2K and you download that, you know, as a Netflix subscriber, there's an authentication and now you have that on your PS5 or your, you know, your Xbox Series X or Series S. You know, if if we're getting that granular, that can really make Netflix the spot and, you know, try to get WWE as comfortable and settled in as possible. I don't know, you know, I'm just speculating on on, on potential, but if, they were, if they're thinking that, 
you know, then that makes Netflix the higher, higher potential. That's, I mean, if I'm, if I'm an exec at Netflix, that's exactly what I'm trying to do. You know, I'm trying to get them to dig in and every potential, everything that we have, we would have that's future cooking. I'm mm-hmm. saying we're putting this on you. You're, you know, you're going to be, you know, not the test, but you're going to be the first ones to get it when we're fully out of beta and everything like they're going to get the whole shebang, whatever yeah. we got, they're getting it because I mean, Vince has been printing money, um, essentially, especially the past five years, they've just been printing money. So yes. I mean, it, it's, it's really a toss up, but Netflix has done a good job getting themselves to be the first in. Yeah. And now everyone else is just trying to follow. Yeah. And I think that's the one thing, especially with streaming services, is that there's a lot of followers, not a lot of leaders in this in this in this streaming service. They wait for one person to make the move and if it becomes successful, everyone else follows. Well, you know, you know, I mean, entertainment is a copycat business, Yeah, you know, oh, yeah. Uh, you know, so you want to you want to you wanna blaze trails. And mm-hmm. if Netflix, you know, they they've been blazing trails in a lot of ways. So they they may have, you know, really cast the first shot across the bow in, in, in the latest iteration of the streaming wars, you know, you've got you've got to take chances and they've taken they they rolled they rolled some big dice, you know. To quote a Battlestar Galactica, you know, Admiral Dama, sometimes you got to roll the hard six. So, you know, it, and it right now it looks like it's going to be the 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 right move because people, <clears throat> pardon me, people are really like, you know, there's a lot of feedback, there's a lot of chatter, you know, on social media around this deal. It because of how massive it is i mean it's on par with the uh, with the big tens you know deal the big ten network you know with their tv deal which is a five billion dollar deal like that's a lot of money and we see what that big ten deal has done for the big ten now they've got usc and ucla coming washington coming oregon coming rumors of florida state trying to trying to come up into the big ten like what that could do for wrestling? Yeah, it's yeah, it, it, the possibility is endless. And then on top of it, imagine attracting wrestlers to your you, to to come to the WWE. It's like, oh, you're on Netflix. Where? Okay, I I I I'll take that deal to work with the WWE to be on Netflix. That's huge right there too for a wrestler. I mean, yeah, I mean, it's because you don't have to worry about not that you really had to worry about USA not being carried, but you know, if it's almost a guarantee, like in Netflix is on Netflix is pretty much almost anywhere. So yeah, it's going to be all, but how, however, I did, I just thought of this okay. is, uh, it is, there is a, there is a, there is a rights thing. So I right. didn't see anything in this deal as far as because you know like Netflix in the UK were ha, you know has rights to shows and things that Netflix USA doesn't have rights for streaming. So like Fresh Prince of Bel Air, for example, that's on Max here, right. but I believe it's still on Netflix in the UK. So right. how I didn't see anything in the articles I've read as far as the international aspect. Of oh, yeah. of I this read, deal, I, I read a little bit about it too. That that impacts international too. Okay, so yeah, so if you got Netflix in the UK, if you got you Netflix, yeah, you you're gonna be impacted by this. Okay, <laughs> so so then that, that 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 makes a big difference because now yeah, because so now you know, now Tony you now Tony Khan's really gotta find find himself a home so that he can make sure his eyeballs are are in that type of range because that's a lot. There's a lot of Netflix. I mean, if, if that's universal across all Netflix, you know, that's, that's something. That's, that's major. That's, uh, I'm not just thinking about the United States. Cause I know. A lot of no, I know. I'm just thinking just of, I know how the licensing yeah, and such, you know, goes with, with Netflix. So, 
Yeah. Wow. <laughs> that yeah. changed the whole dynamic. Then he, that that impact that definitely <laughs> impacts the di- the dynamic of it because I'm, I'm you know when I hear a deal like because a deal like that you know generally is region specific so you know we're talking about if we're talking international as well that then they actually they may have underpaid honestly they may no have bad. underpaid you know yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so if you think about it that Netflix got a deal I think probably what happened was this was the best deal TKO can get and you know how people like to spend stuff right well we, when a company says they're going to pay you double of your current deal right? and I don't think they were getting that they were going to get that from anybody else you take the deal you take the deal, and especially when Nick Khan said in 2019 that you know that the 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 deal with the Fox uh, deal, was yeah. yeah, with Peacock. The oh, the Peacock, Peacock deal, okay, was undervalued. Yeah, yeah, but the Peacock deal also was it was a risk. Yeah, you know because they were going from their own network, and they they were taking a risk, but it paid off. Yeah, because they got five million dollars from Netflix. I mean, five billion, billion dollars from Netflix. Yeah, <laughs> billion with a B, B. a big old one B. Thing, like we were saying too, is that Netflix takes financial risks. You know, yeah, they they, they overpay for a lot of. I forgot, didn't they pay? Was it three hundred twenty-eight million for a for for three? Was it three movies? With the, what was it? Swords, knife out. Was it knife out? Oh knife yeah, out. knives out and uh, yeah. They paid a lot of money, yeah. Was it three hundred and twenty-eight million? Something like, like that. For like two movies, Glass Onion and Knives Out, I think it was. Right. They. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah, they, uh, they 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 take the risks. I mean, you've got to. You've got to have a little maverick, and you've got you've got to you've got to take risks, and you know, scare money don't make money. So look what they did with the animation. You see what happened with the Netflix animation, right? Yeah, I mean the animation. You know they've they've been able to secure a lot of exclusivity for a lot of good anime. You know you can go to Netflix and you can watch One Piece. You can watch. They've got some good original stuff on there as well. But uh, but the suck thing too is that they 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 didn't they downsize that the animation aspect of it like the. Like the in-house animation, in-house probably yeah, because it costs a lot of money to animate, and it's a lot easier to outsource. And there's so many excellent studios out there that doing it in-house was probably a silly idea. When you can contract an outside studio to do it, they probably do it better, and you can still slap on Netflix original series on top. Yeah. I mean, they do that with stuff that wasn't theirs and then they buy it and they say Netflix original series and we're like man this ain't no original series of yours like who you lying to <laughs> we remember when this was on TV like who you lying to nice but fact. but anyone new to it who hadn't seen it if their first exposure to it is on Netflix and they see that they're going to think it's a Netflix original series like it's going to be new to somebody so right. And, and and the the reason why I brought that up too as we in this dope conversation is that 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 again for someone that never watched Raw before and they see that Netflix ding, and then Monday Night Raw. That's a good question. Is 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 the Netflix is, is the Netflix the dumb thing? Is that going to play before? I mean. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't. I don't know about that. I don't. I don't think. I, mean, I don't know. Because I really can't see TKO letting yeah. Netflix call that an, yeah. an original, you know, production. I really have. I really doubt that we'll see that. But we might. Like I. I don't know. Yeah. What does that play to a person that's never seen an episode of Raw? They'll, they'll assume this is a, a Netflix original live show. I think I think <laughs> likely what we'll, what we'll see is something that says, you know, kind of like what they've done with Fox, you know, SmackDown on Fox. They'll just say Raw on Netflix. It'll be co-branded. I really can't see 
them allowing, especially now that TKO's at the helm, them allowing a full Netflix solo branding to come or appear before any WWE or TKO branding. I just can't see that happening. It's even if it was still just Vince, I really can't see that happening. That would be highly improbable. If it happens, that'd be if it happens, that's the heist of the century. But I don't I don't see that happening. Hey, you never know. 20, 2024 has just started off with a bang with this with this deal. Facts. This came out of nowhere. Like no one I like, yeah, I didn't like, foresee this happening at all. Yeah. And they found they found the money to pay for it. So again, we'll see what they're gonna do with SmackDown. You know, NXT has a home. It's gonna be interesting to see if it's true that Okada is coming to NXT. That would be because dumb, but huge acquisition. No, oh, that would be a, no, no. The the acquisition isn't the concern. The concern is Okada has no business being on NXT. Send him to the Performance Center. So that he can learn the their style, the way they like to present, and you have him debut at a at a big event like AJ Styles does. You don't send Okada to NXT. He's not a rookie. He's not as like I, I didn't think. I, I thought it was a disrespectful to them for them to send Shinsuke to NXT. I thought it was disrespectful yeah. for Samoa Joe to be on NXT. That but yeah, they did have some banging matches. Him and no, I, I'm not. They they did great work down there, but in my opinion. They should have gone straight to the main roster. They had no business, in my opinion, being on NXT. They should have been just, just like AJ Styles had no business on NXT, which is why they didn't put him on there. You right. get a guy of that caliber, you put him on your main TV. Okada should never see an NXT ring. No, no. If 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 I can have an idea, I would have him. But I doubt it's going to happen because I think he's still kind of still got to do stuff with New Japan is to have him as one of the secret people that come in the Royal Rumble. But that's not going to happen. No, there's no time for that. Uh It would be cool if he debuted at the Rumble, but I don't think there's time for that. No, 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 definitely not. But, bro, this has been a dope, dope conversation about wrestling because, you know, wrestling is one of my favorite topics to talk about here. How can people find you and what's your last thought? On what we talked about. Oh, my last thought is uh, big money, big risks. That's my last thought. And uh, obviously, you can find your boy Rocky Mr. Magic on the original Jeek podcast. You can find that's J E E K. You can find us on, you know, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, pretty much any platform. You can find the original Jeek podcast, which is the best conversation combining sports and geek culture. Any Jeek Nation podcast that you want to listen to, which are pro wrestling show Breaking Ring Rust, you can find that. Also, just search Jeek, J-E-E-K space nation, and you can find us. Keep your head up for and your ears listening for not only new shows, new episodes of the original Jeek podcast, and some upcoming ones of Breaking Ring Rust, but we have actually going to make a, spe- a little announcement. We have acquired the dads who like anime podcast. So that will be debuting on Jig Nation. We will start, we will try to expand a little bit because the original dads, all are dads. And because they're dads, time is, <laughs> is a precious commodity. So we will be looking to have other dads come on to the show. And we're looking to debut dads who like anime on the Jig Nation podcast network in late spring. So if you're a dad and you like anime and you want to be a guest and talk about it, you can hit me up nation at gmail.com or on, you know, Facebook, IG, Twitter, any of those social networking platforms. All right. You heard that, you know, call at the brother You're doing great things, doing amazing things. So go holla at him like now. <laughs> right now. As soon right as you now, hear this. Right we're, we're, we're waiting. We're waiting. My phone we're ain't waiting. my phone ain't dinging yet. Yeah, so we're waiting. <laughs> oh, I guess we got posted before it dings. Okay, I guess yeah, so. I'll I'll be patient. Yeah. We'll be patient, but yeah, just do it, do it, do it. All right. So this has been another great collaboration. Look down the road for the future collaborations down the road, and we out. Peace. Peace.
ready to make an entrance, so back with cut. DJ what? And you're listening to the original Jeek Podcast.